Hello guys, I know it's been a while since my last video. Many things happened and I didn't have time to make a video. But I do what I can to get back to schedule. Now here we have this 2020 MacBook Air which according to the server doesn't work. I bought it for the outrageous price of about 80 euro. Let's connect it to power and see if it will show any signs of life. Surprisingly, we see an Apple logo. And not so long after that, we get to the lock screen. All the display and the keyboard appear to be in very good working condition, but the trackpad is not responding at all. There is no cursor on the screen, and also there is no haptic feedback when I press on it. My best assumption at this point is that the previous owner has spilled something on the trackpad. Let's open it up and see what's waiting for us on the inside. But before that, I'm happy to announce the sponsor of this project. PCBWay. They feature a variety of manufacturing services, including many types of rigid and flexible PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing and others. That's why they can be the one-stop solution for our projects. They also have an open source community where everyone can share and access different types of electronics projects. Also, there you can directly order the PCBs you need for every one of them. Here you can upload your designs, specify your requirements and get an instant quote for your project. Their PCBs start as well as $5 for 10 pieces. You can find the link to their website in the video description. After removing the bottom cover, there is nothing much obvious except for the corrosion marks on the cover itself. So let's continue by disconnecting the battery so we don't cause any accidental damage while working on the laptop. Now we need to disconnect the trackpad cable from the main board while making sure to organize all the bolts we remove to avoid long screw damage when we assemble the MacBook again. As I lift up the tape on that connector, we can see the first sign of liquid damage on the board. Now I will remove the trackpad completely to gain access to its board so we can see how bad it actually is. After removing yet another type of bolts, we can take out the trackpad from the keyboard side, being careful not to damage the display. As you can see, there is a lot of corrosion and probably that's why the trackpad is not working. Also, let's take a look at the smaller board that's mounted near the trackpad. The only visible damage here is some corrosion on the connector, but I don't think it's that bad. The good news here is that the main board looks untouched. Well, whatever was built on the device. Now let's take a closer look at the trackpad. After getting the cable out of the way, we can see lots of corrosion on the PCB, which generally isn't a great sign. The cable obviously has seen better days, but for now let's focus on the PCB. I will proceed with cleaning as much corrosion as possible, using just some isopropyl alcohol and a brush. After a fair bit of brushing, it definitely looks better. Now the last thing I can do is to check for shorts here and there, as I wasn't able to find any schematics for the trackpad itself. I'm usually going for the capacitors, as they are connected to some kind of power rail most of the time, and also they have the tendency to short themselves when they go bad. But here I'm not able to find any shorts. Now I'll repeat the same for the other board that's near the battery. And then we will take a closer look at the cable and try to repair it. As you can see, there are some missing parts from the cable, which most likely are connected to power. So let's tape the cable end to the table and get to work. The repair will definitely not be pretty, but the point now is just to make it work. And yes, as a permanent solution, replacing the cable will be the better option. I just don't have one in stock. So I will try my best 
to see if I can get the trackpad working with this one. And if everything is alright, I will order a new cable and I will change it when it arrives. Now let's assemble the MacBook and hope for the best. Upon powering it on, I am happy to report that the trackpad is completely functional again. Both the touch and the force feedback work as they should. Now the only thing left to do is to remove the user data by pre-installing the macOS. After the painfully slow process has finished, here we can see the specs and also the battery health percentage of the MacBook, which is definitely not bad having in mind that the laptop came about 4 years ago. To sum up this repair, I bought the MacBook for about 8 euro from a local second-hand marketplace. It was described as not working, but as it turned out, the only issue was a not working trackpad. And now the only thing left to do is to stop the cable when the new one arrives. Huge thanks to my Patreons, Michael and James Demat for supporting my work. As always, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, until the next time, bye.